today we're going to work on some southern yellow pine. We're going to start by leveling the pith and the way that we'll do that is we'll take a big post basically and just pry it up, slide some shims or some pieces of plywood, some scraps, things like that underneath the bunks. And see if we can't level the log out a little bit. I also rotate the log around a little bit, see if I can't orient some of those bigger branches or bigger knots. See if I can't think about how the blade's going to pass through there and where some of those knots might wind up. Now that we're leveled up, we'll start planning our cuts a little bit. I try to measure up and think about what this log's going to become, what's the sizes that I think I'll be able to get out of it, start making my first cut. It's tough to figure your first cut because there's branches, there's low spots. These are some of the tops of the trees. So it's not very uniform going across the top. I tend to just sort of make an arbitrary pass uh, and that gives me a starting point. Something I had happen to me a lot on this particular day. I don't know if it was the knots or just the wood, but I could notice the blade binding when I'd hit some of the sections of the very large branches where they would come out. So I just took a flat bar, I would lift that up a little bit and slide a felling wedge in there and that would relieve some of that tension or some of that pressure, some of the binding on the blade. And that seemed to help it cut a whole lot better. Uh, you could tell the cuts were better. Uh, there was a lot better blade speed once I did that. Here at the end of the log, you can actually see the piece of plywood that I used to shim the log up to level that, the pith or the center of it. It's uh, pretty surprising to me how heavy these top cuts are. Uh, they really don't look very big, but they still weigh quite a bit. And now we'll rotate the log 180 degrees, put the flat side down on the bunks, uh, make another cut through it. And now we'll have two level sides, or basically two even sides of the log, and that'll give us a uniform width for our uh, what will eventually be our cant. So here I'm going to try to make the distance be the same from that center or that pith down to the bunk and up to the blade. And that should give me kind of a uniform width for the board from the center pith so I don't have an extra half inch on one side versus the other. So it should kind of center that uh, in the middle of the boards when I start to saw down through them.
Everything's going great, and I'm really making my way through this tree until I realize I'm not going to clear that log stop. So the frame that I have underneath, I can't drop the log stops far enough. I can't let them keep on going. I need to get a sawzall and trim out where they, where they slide through so they can pass through. So I tend to have to switch out to the shorter log stops a little bit sooner than I normally would. And now it's time to flip the log over and work our way back down towards that center. So I use a lot of two by material to pin the log. I do that because again, my mill is backwards. Uh, it should be oriented the other way, but that right now would shoot all of this sawdust back at the house. So I just kind of work my way out to the middle of the bunks. Uh, and when I get down to the bottom, I get pretty close to that as I'm milling the one by material. When I get close to the two by fours, I generally just stop there and I leave that last slab, sort of the, the center of that log. I just end up leaving that one. And it usually works out to be anywhere from an inch and three quarter maybe, or two inches, two and a quarter, whatever it is. And I just, I just kind of leave it there. And if I ever want to do something with it, I can always come back, mill it down. Or if I'm looking for some really great kind of center grain, you know, I've got a roughly a two inch slab. In these cases, some of these are either two by eights or two by 10 slab to work with. So that's what you'll see when I get down to the bottom. Anyone that follows along our house build might recognize these boards. This is what's left over from our stair stringers. Uh, so I had a couple of cutoffs left uh, from building all those. I cut them down to fit in between the rails here. And the reason I did that is I just went this morning to actually just to Harbor Freight and picked up this uh, scissor jack. And I think this is going to speed up when I try to level the pith. So I think I can just slide this underneath there and uh, kind of crank it up a little bit. Most of the logs that I have are only about a thousand pounds and I think this thing's rated for like 4,000 or I don't know, 1,300 pounds, something like that. I don't think it's gonna have any issues leaning a log up, but I think it's gonna speed up. I was kind of jacking them up and sliding things underneath and uh, that's, it's difficult to be precise. I think this guy, I could just put a couple cranks and I can you know, adjust it to get it you know, within a quarter, within an eighth, somewhere in there. So uh, excited to kind of see how this works out today. Um, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully you'll kind of see me using it a little bit more today and, and uh, I'll give you an update whether I think it worked out great, things I'd like to improve about it. Uh, I did, I had to make a couple of decisions here. Uh, I was going to put this underneath, but it made it hard to get to the screw jack and I was worried that that might get in the way. But as it sits right now, it is almost, it is almost dead even with the, the log bunks. So, Hopefully I don't have a log that kind of dips below, and if it does, I'll have to move this guy around. I left it so I could slide it, and I can move the, the jack anywhere that it needs to go uh, for right now. So I haven't fastened it or anything like that. We'll see kind of where it works out best, and then uh, I can do something more permanent if I wanted to. So, uh, But we're going to mill some more today. It's real windy, cloudy, and it's sprinkling off and on. Uh, so not a really great day to do some of the stuff I need on the house. So we'll uh, continue what we did yesterday. We were sawing some lumber. I mostly milled one by material. I need quite a bit of one by material, uh, either for doing ceilings on the house or for wrapping posts or pretty much general trim stuff, uh, even fence boards. I might uh, rip some of them down and turn them into fence boards. We wound up with anywhere around one by nines 
um, which I know is a weird size, but once you cant them, that's kind of how they wound up. And I got some uh, about one by tens, I'd say one by ten and an eighth, three sixteenths, somewhere in there. So after they dry, I guess if I if I did decide to edge them or anything like that, I'd say they're about a a, a total one inch by ten inch board. So I think that'll work great if we ever uh, condition them and make them into fence boards as well. So I like doing one by material because I get so much more yield out of it. The dimensional lumber, I'm not going to kiln dry any of this. It's just going to air dry. I mean, it's going to take a long time to do that. Uh, and in that time, you know, it could kind of uh, go, I guess, any which direction it wants. But a lot of the, a lot of my structural stuff that I have to use for the house, I kind of prefer it to be kiln dried. Uh, right now, obviously, it's not the case. 2x4s and 2x6s are really expensive. But uh, it wasn't always that way. And I'm hoping that kind of that comes back down before we ever have to buy some some big quantities of wood uh, but two by fours two by sixes i generally rather get them pick through the pile um, pick out some good wood and everything uh, from kind of the lowes or home depot or the big box store so uh, or even get them from a lumber yard so i don't mill a lot of two by fours and two by sixes i do leave the center pith whatever that works out i kind of roll the log back and forth and i cut what i can out of it uh, and then kind of what the center winds up, I just leave it the way that it is. So some of them come out to be like two inches, two and a half inches, sometimes or sometimes less. And I think for those things, I'll just probably plan on someday making a big bench out of them uh, or using them for things like that. And if I ever really wanted to, I could throw them back on the mill and run them through. But that that in the pith there, it's sometimes you get uh, it, it kind of changes the way the lumber is. And so uh, rather than trying to kind of hit something you know, right on the money, I just kind of leave it and figure that someday I'll come back and I'll mill it to whatever dimension I ultimately want it to be. So uh, that's kind of, you'll see today, uh, a little bit more of that. I know you probably saw that uh, yesterday. So, uh, so I think we're all set up uh, to go and uh, let's get some logs set up and we'll start milling.
I thought these boards worked really well. I actually made two of them. I put one in the front and one in the back. Uh, I found that depending on where the knots were in a log, I might need to jack the back of it up or the front of it, or whichever way you kind of look at it. Um, but the other thing that it made easy was measuring up. So I could measure up on the one end of the log, I could measure up to the pith, and then on this end, I could just pull the tape from here as well. So I didn't have to do any kind of math. I didn't have to try to get to the, to the concrete or anything like that. So I thought that made it really easy uh, just to kind of measure and match on the both ends and to use the jack at either end to be able to lift the log. Uh, the jack worked great. Uh, I kind of had an idea that it probably would because they sell a like a tow board, a bunk that has a crank on it, a scissor jack on it. Uh, but I, f I forget how much that is, but it's a lot more than 35 bucks. So um, the scissor jack that I got worked great, and uh, and these kind of platforms worked great as well. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. If you're looking for ideas for your sawmill, uh, this might be a great great feature to add to it. Alright, so we're all cleaned up, uh, swept everything, shoveled all the sawdust out, and uh, ran the blower to clear off all the slab. So, it's time for lunch. So I pulled the dump trailer over here and threw all the scraps into it. I ran it over here with the tractor, and uh, it, it's kind of a shame. There's a lot of firewood there, but uh, here in Florida, we don't have much of a need for it. So, this will probably just end up in a burn pit. I hope someday to be able to get a chipper for my tractor, a PTO powered chipper, and I can throw a lot of these in there. These are mostly the top cuts when you take off all the knots or the very top of the log. And I tried to sort it a little bit because I know my dad, he does have a fireplace, so I, I put the oak onto the right hand side in case he wants to pick through that. And then on this left hand side here is all that yellow pine. So here's our, our boards, our yield. So we've got uh, these are various widths. I believe these are about a one by eight or so, maybe like a one by nine ish. Um, I kind of just pick pick about where they they work out in case I ever want to rip them down and make something else out of them. Um, but we've got a stack here. These I believe are one by ten by tens, and so they're either one by eights or one by ten by tens. Uh, so this is kind of our pile of those, all stickered up. Since we had a lot of rain today. I also took a lot of the top cuts that I had and I anything that had a flat surface on it I ran it through the table saw and made stickers out of them. Try to make all my stickers sort of uniform. I try to cut them out for about 48 inches and that way they kind of all match. Unfortunately I have some shorter ones and then the 48 inch ones stick out here. Uh, but here are our 8 foot lengths. One by, one by, I think these are 1 by 10s by 8s or 1 by 8 by 8s. Uh, I'd have to grab a tape to check real quick. So we've got those. And then I had these. These are kind of our shorter cuts. This is when I was going through and trimming off. You get a really big taper and a log. So I just took the, the skill saw and I cut some of those off where they would start into a branch or go down narrow. And I ran it through the table saw. Actually, just sort of freehanded it. Ran it through the table saw, put an edge on them. And these are kind of a little bit shorter boards. We've got a little stack there as well. And when I got down to the center pith, uh, or usually the center parts of the logs, you can see some of the, the centers right there. Uh, I just sort of, instead of trying to make those one bys, I uh, would just sort of leave whatever was left over. So I kind of flip the log over, uh, run, down, run down one side, get pretty close to the middle or so, and then flip the log over and work my way down. Uh, but once it gets to about a two inch piece, I just sort of left them. I thought these would make really nice benches or something. Uh, so they're really, they're actually, Pretty heavy, uh, and they're eight. They're either eight inch wide or ten inch wide, depending on the logs. I think. Uh, I think this one uh, here is ten inches wide. I believe this one also is ten inches wide. So this is about a. It's about a two and a quarter, I think, on this one, um, by ten, by eight, I believe. This one is by eight. It's about a two by. 10 by 8, I think. This would be about a 2 by 8 by 8. And this was our long one. This is about a 10 foot 2. Uh, so this is a, I believe, an 8 inch 2 by 8 by 10. Uh, now these are, those are actual dimensions. They're just slightly over 2 inches or so. Uh, so that is their actual dimension, not necessarily like a 2 by that you'd buy in the store. So we have plenty of time as they shrink back. Uh, we'll have ten, plenty of time to run them through a joiner or anything like that and, and move them down to a more nominal size. 
or if I choose, I'll just use them as a bench, leave them like they are, uh, or use them like joists, something like that. So I just kind of left them, left them long. I thought they were really nice. Uh, they're great because the center of the wood has really clean grain. Uh, it's got just a few smaller knots, none of the big, big knots that you get on the outer parts of the tree. So I thought that would make them great benches. So great, beautiful grain on these. So I'm excited to, to see what kind of projects we come up with. What do you think about all of our lumber? It's cool. Yeah? We're going to get into some projects with all of it? Yeah, we're going to build me a desk. A desk, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you back next time.